Hello, welcome to this uh, new Dr. Flow episode. Today I will talk about Microsoft Flow and Conditional Trigger. My name is uh, Dr. Flow, my real name is Sergio Luca, and I'm VP in Office 365 and also in business application, more specifically Flow, and I'm based in Brussels. So you can follow me at my hashtag at Sergio Luca. And so uh, last year, in April 2018, I wrote a blog post about uh, flow conditional trigger because that was available at that time in Logic Apps, at least in the Logic App Designer, but not in the uh, flow designer. And so in this blog post, I show you how to, how to act that. So you had to export the, the flow, the JSON code, change it and report it. So that, that works, but still it's dangerous because that's not fully supported by the flow team. So today we can do that directly from within the flow designer and I will illustrate that. So what, what is the context of, uh, of my demo? I have a SharePoint site. In this SharePoint site, I have a document library called con flow content types. Actually, it's the same site and the same document library that I've used last year to illustrate the conditional trigger. In this flow content type document library, uh, I've defined two types of content type, document and contract. And when you use the contract content type, you have three options, freelance, uh, contractor and employee. And what I want is that I want my flow to trigger only if the document I add or I modify is of type contract, of course, but only if it's a employee or contractor. So if it's a freelance, the, 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 the flow should not trigger. So I've created the following flow with the following trigger. So when a file is created or modified, and that's what I usually do is I have a scope called debugging and in debugging, I have a three compose, so one compose for the trigger body. So where you store this, you get more information when you do this than when you check the trace of your flow. Uh, and trigger condition. In the trigger condition one, I check if um, the trigger or the, the type of contract field uh, of my trigger contain employee or contractor. And the second condition is if the content type name is contract. Okay, so I usually put that in a debugging scope because it's easy to debug. Then if you store that at the level of the trigger. And now what you need to do, so just you need to first test to make sure that your trigger condition works and I did it before. So now you can copy and paste this into the condition setting. So if you go to your trigger, you have the settings and now what is new is this trigger condition. And you can put several trigger condition. So the first one will be this one and you need to put at because that's um, all the uh, Logic App Workflow Definition language works. And you can add a second one, which is this one. It contains employee or contractor. And you put an at here. Okay. And now let's go to the SharePoint site. So this one is freelance, so normally it should not trigger. But now this one is going to be employee. And of course, after several seconds, you should see a flow run. So I'm going to pause the demo a little bit. OK. 
okay so actually it worked okay so if we check this one the conditions are true so it's either a contractor or an employee and this one is true so the content type is the good one and now if i switch that to freelance normally the flow should not trigger so i will pause the video a little bit and in two or three minutes we will check that out just to make sure this one was triggered at 5 30 pm okay Okay, so after four minutes, we see that the flow didn't trigger. So this works. And actually you can check because the flow was triggered, but there was a kind of a hidden run. So normally if we check the whole run, you will see right here, the check no data. And Three minutes ago, there were three minutes ago. There was a there was a check at uh, five thirty one, and the the condition was not met. You see, so that's very interesting. But you don't pay for the run, and I think for the Office three five license, the number of run is still limited. So this might change in the coming uh, weeks. I don't know, but uh, so this is important, right? And also, the problem is that if you have many runs, even though you don't pay for the runs, uh, they have an impact on your run statistics, right? So it's better to filter um, in your condition trigger, right? So that's, I think, a good practice. Thank you very much.